Um, so what we are going to do a look at today is a business analysis uh, core concept model. <clears throat> so this core concept model is um, what holds business analysis together. This is kind of a business analysis um, life cycle. Uh, that's how business analysis revolves. It revolves around all these uh, core uh, concept model. Everything is within this environment. And the first thing is change. Then the next thing is uh, need. Then we have solution. Then we have stakeholder. We have value and we have a uh, context. So let's start from change. Change is the act of transformation in response to a need. Change works to improve the performance of an enterprise. So, so there is a change. Something triggers change. And what triggers change is problem. When there is a problem, then company will start looking for a change. Trying to solve their problem will bring about a change. So, and that is the main thing a business analyst is doing. You are a change agent. You are coming there to solve the problem and solving the problem you create, you bring about a positive change to the organization. Then we will look at need. What is need? Need is a requirement, a problem or opportunity to be addressed. Need can cause changes by motivating stakeholders to act. So, so when there is a, a situation or there is a problem, the stakeholder will start running out up and down or running around to solve the problem and trying to solve the problem will create a change to the organization so this is how you see this uh, you see this network analysis here of the uh, core concept model you see the way they are networking all this, uh, they, they work together, they are highly interwoven. So, and then to um, solve this um, a need that bring about a change, the, the stakeholders work to provide solution for the need. So that is what we are doing as business analysts. When there is problem, you'll be invited to come and uh, cause a change, a positive change. And the only way you can cause a positive change is to provide solutions. A specific way of satisfying one or more needs in a context, that is a solution. A solution satisfy a need by res resolving a problem faced by stakeholders. So that is where it was. And who is stakeholder? A group or individual with a relationship to the change, the need or the solution. So the stakeholder, they are the people that um, managing the whole process, driving all these changes. When there is a problem, they are being triggered to act. They are motivated by, by problem to act. Acting means they, are, they have to do what they need to do to provide solution by engaging um, the right persons that will address the, the problem and create the change. They initiate 
the project that will bring about the change. They are the stakeholders. Stakeholders are, it can be um, the, the CEO, they can be program manager, they can be uh, the project sponsor that is initiating this project in order to solve the, the problem. So, and all these things uh, boils down to creating value. So after all these processes, the solution must provide a value. If the solution doesn't create value, then it's useless. So value, here is the what, importance or usefulness of something to a stakeholder within a context. So this is value. This solution provides value. When there is a solution, then it creates positive change. And the value will be either the company is growing or the customers are happy. So these are the value uh, the, the solution creates. And that is what the stakeholders are looking for, this value. And then context. Context is the circumstances that influences are influenced by and provide understanding of the change. Change, changes occur within a context. So context is the environment where all these are happening. That is how this um, business analysis core concept model, what that is all it's um, all about. So they are introducing us to the, the requirement, the problems, how to solve these problems, solution that needed to be to, to affect this change the stakeholders that need to be involved, the value that we need to create, and the context, the environment where all these things are happening. And these are going to bring us to the next thing we are going to look into today, which is a business requirement. As a business analyst, most of the things we are going to be looking at we boil down to business um, requirements. Business requirements and the technical requirements. So, but it's all about requirements. So the requirement is the, um, what uh, the, the company needs to create this uh, change. So let's look at um, different types of requirements we are going to look at. From, um, we need to understand what requirement is, requirement classification, requirement elicitation, strategy analysis, requirement analysis, requirement design and the requirement management life cycle. So that's how we're going to study requirements. From now on, we're going to be hearing a lot of requirements. And if you're going to be a business analyst, you are going to be very comfortable with that word requirement. What is requirement? A requirement is a usable representation of a need. Requirements focus on understanding what kind of value could be delivered if 
requirement is fulfilled. So requirement here means that there is a situation. What do we need to do to solve this problem? What we, do, what we need, the need means the requirement here. For instance, if we are, we are now uh, want to go online, our business has been um, offline. And these days, because of um, a high uh, online awareness or people prefer to be shopping online, then we want to go um, online. For us to go online, there are some things we need to do to be online. And what are those things we need to do to go online? These are the requirements. What are the requirements? So that is the requirement. If we, if we need to go online, we need to, we need a website. We need the website to be developed. We need the website to, to have so many functionalities. We need to host the website. We need a domain name. So all these things we need, these are the requirements for us to go online. So that is uh, what is requirement. It's just a simple understanding. So then we we'll look at a requirement classification. Requirement is classified into so many uh, subcategories. And the first requirement classification here is the business requirement. What is business requirement? Statement of goals, objective, and outcome that describe why a change has been initiated. They can apply to the whole of an enterprise, a business, area or specific initiative that is a business requirement then we have a stakeholder requirement what is stakeholder requirement this describes the need of a stakeholder that must be met in order to achieve business requirement they may serve as bridge between business and solution requirement. So business requirement is the goals and objective that a change need to uh, bring about. What are the, the objectives of this particular, we we'll have a problem statement, and uh, how do we solve this problem? And what are the objectives? What do we benefit from solving this problem? So these are the business requirements. The objective is maybe to increase profitability and increase sales and uh, increase a lot of growth within the organization. These are business requirements. So, and now stakeholders requirement is what do we need to do to satisfy these stakeholders in order to achieve this business requirement? So because we cannot, if you are trying to address the business need, we must address the business need, which is business requirement. We must address the business need within the context of satisfying the stakeholder that initiated that process. So if you are satisfying the business need and we are not satisfying the stakeholders um, requirement, we are not doing it the way the stakeholders want it to be done. We are not actually solving a problem. So that's why if there is a situation, the stakeholders say, this is a problem I'm having and this is what I want to achieve. You cannot work in isolation because you're a business analyst. Uh, after all, you've known what uh, they, they've told you. You must work with the stakeholder 
continuously to make sure that you are addressing their own need, making sure that while you are trying to solve that problem, they are happy. They need to validate every step you take trying to achieve this, uh, their business uh, objectives and goal. So that's how business requirements and uh, stakeholder requirements work together. And in order to achieve that goal, that will bring us to solution requirement. Solution requirement describe the capability and qualities of a solution that meet the stakeholders' requirement, that meets the stakeholders' requirement. They provide the appropriate level of detail to allow for the development and implementation of the solution. Solution requirement can be divided into two uh, categories. So solution requirement here means the solution that matches the business specification. If we have a, a business, for instance, let me continue with the analogy of uh, the e-commerce websites that we want to go uh, online with um, a budget of 10,000 pounds. And we, we need this to be, we need this project to be achieved within three months. So if we are looking for solution requirements, solution that meets this uh, specification, going online within 10,000 pounds budget and within a uh, three months timeline. Now, we know that um, there are so many e-commerce solutions out there in the market we can uh, adopt to solve this problem. But for instance, looking at, uh, let me use um, SAP Cloud Commerce. SAP Cloud Commerce is one of the highly analytical e-commerce. It gives you a lot of functionalities. It gives you a lot of uh, analytics. It is integrated with um, a lot of um, artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities. And you can integrate a lot of uh, other third party within it. So it's very powerful. So if you want to go um, online, you can say that SAP Cloud Commerce is very powerful, but it's very costly. You can't get SAP uh, Cloud Commerce for one year for no less than 50,000 pounds. So if you are looking for solution, now we know it's a powerful solution, but it's not within our requirements because our requirement here is 10,000 pounds and um, three months. And SAP Cloud Commerce, there's no way you can deploy it within three months. It's at least six months. So these are solution requirements. So you need to look for solutions that meet the, the, the stakeholders um, need as well. So we have a uh, big commerce, we have um, WooCommerce, we have Shopify. So looking at all the solution within the market, you can say, okay, um, Shopify e-commerce, we can get a Shopify within that uh, amount of money and we can, it's, easy, it's very easy to deploy. So we can deploy it within a within few months, within two months or even within one month, we can, we can deploy Shopify and start selling something online. So you can see how solution requirement works. So solution requirement must meet the, 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 the uh, some of the stakeholders uh, requirement. Uh, stakeholders saying that all we have for this project is 10,000 pounds. So we need something that will meet what they are saying. You can't bring, can't, 
uh, tell them that uh, we've uh, come up with uh, SAP Cloud Commerce. After all, they told you that this is their budget. You know their budget. Why are you bringing uh, a solution of uh, 50,000 where they, they told you that have a, a budget of 10,000? So this is how solution requirements uh, works. Not only that you have the, 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 the functionalities or the capabilities as a software, but you have to look at timeline and you have to look at budget as well. So let's look at uh, subcategories of solution requirement. We have functional requirement. Functional requirement describes the capability that a solution must have in terms of behavior and information that the solution will manage. So, I mean, functional requirements here means, they say, the, the, the behavior. When you talk about behavior, we are, talk, we are talking about um, features functional features of that particular solution that um, a customer can feel. Continue using the e-commerce websites as, a, as an example. Functional requirements here means that it must have a front end where a customer can see products, where all the products are listed. It must have a product page that describes the product in detail. It must have um, a login page where customers can actually log in, or registration page where customers can register and create an account. It must have um, a shopping uh, cart where customers can add the, 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 the product of their choice to the cart and check out and have an integrated payment gateway where a customer can make payment online without um, uh, going to this, to, to, to going out or uh, calling the, the company. So customer can just make payment and place order. So these are functional requirements that you can see and use. So that's a, a functional we are talking about in uh, behavior. So you can see it and feel it. But non-functional requirements or quality service requirements, these are some of the requirements that um, you cannot feel, but they are there. Some of these requirements are like um, using the same e-commerce, we are talking like, like a security features of that e-commerce, how secure is the e-commerce website? These are security. Uh, how is it, um, what, uh, what about the speed, the speed of the e-commerce? These are some features you cannot see. Uh, yeah, I feel, but they are there. What about the scalability of the e-commerce? The scalability means that what if 1 million people decide to shop on that e-commerce at the same time? Can the e-commerce carry the, this amount of people or will the site crash? So these are scalabilities. You cannot see such requirements, but they are, they are very important requirements of a solution. Then we have a transition requirement. Transition requirement describe the capability that the solution must have and the condition the solution must meet to facilitate transition from the current state to the future state. So, what are the capability? What are some of these capabilities? If we are trying to move from current state to 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 to, to future state, these are transition capabilities. So if we are now we are selling our products 
on offline. And now we are planning to go online as well. What are the features our solution must have? We can't say we are going online if we don't have all the features, the required features, like functional e-commerce websites and the ability to make delivery when a customer places an order. These are some of the transition requirements. So if we are transiting from um, offline to online, we cannot transit, we cannot say that the solution is satisfied until all these conditions are met to, to, to be able to um, do business online effectively. So these are the, what means transition, transiting from current state to the uh, future state. These are the conditions and that's what we call transition requirement. So, all these things about requirement. That's, it. That's why you call it a requirement classification. Do you have any problem, any question at this point? No, sir. Okay. Please, sir, can you send Shade the link? She's asking on how she can join. I she, she 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 didn't log into her portal because I don't know if okay let if me she... okay thank you sir This, uh, this, uh, this is going to destruct my class now. This is something I don't like doing when I start a class. If she's, uh, if she had, um, because I'm not with, I'm not working um, with my this thing. It's going to be difficult for me to send her that link now.
I've sent the link to her via her WhatsApp, but please, next time, if you are late, don't, I don't want people disturbing me when I've started my lectures. I don't do that, no matter what. If you are late, because all the, all the, everything you need to log in here is provided through the so course portal. You can go to course portal from there, you log in. So that's why you need to, but if you are struggling to log into your course portal, then you should be able to let me know that on time. Not when I'm teaching, you want to drag me back to start doing other things. I don't do that. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. So the next thing we are doing, um, going to look into with um, this course uh, requirement classification. And the next thing we are going to do is uh, requirement elicitation or requirement gathering. So when you hear requirement elicitation, they are the same thing as a requirement gathering. So they are the same. So if you hear that, just know that is is a, a licitation is requirement. It's just data collection or data collection. So now we'll be talking about requirement. What is requirement? How can how the requirement is being classified? Different types of requirement. But how do we now collect this requirement? How do we gather this requirement in order to or start our uh, analyze our 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 um to proceed with our project and start solving the problem we are meant to solve. So now looking at this map, you can see the inputs, the tags the outputs. The inputs are things we need to uh, impute during the requirement um, elicitation. We're looking at need, we're looking at uh, business analysis information, we are looking at uh, stakeholders engagement, we're looking at uh, business analysis performance assessment. This is where the input will be coming from. But the actual task we are going to be doing, what we are going to be doing in order to conduct um, requirements gathering, uh, number one, we have to prepare for the elicitation, which is requirement gathering. We need to have a plan. Then secondly, we need to conduct the elicitation properly. Then thirdly, we need to confirm the result of the elicitation. Number four, we need to communicate the business analysis information. And then we need to manage stakeholder collaboration. So that is how we are going to be managing um, a requirement gathering or requirement elicitation. So how do we prepare requirement elicitation? It involves ensuring that stakeholders have the information they need to provide and that they understand the nature of the activity they are going to uh, perform. It also set a shape it also set a shared set of expectation regarding the outcome of the activity. Preparation may also involve identifying research source or preparing to conduct an experiment to see if the process change, uh, process change actually results in an improvement. 
So what this means is that in order to conduct requirement elicitation, you need to have a requirement elicitation plan. You don't just jump in and start conducting elicitation. And who are, whom do you conduct, um, uh, gather this requirement from? You collect this requirement from stakeholders. So in order to collect this requirement, you need to prepare your stakeholders ahead of time. You need to communicate them, you need to let them know ahead of time that on so 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 date that I want to collect requirements pertaining this activity from you. You need to know if there are chance, if you need to know if they have if the date is okay by them. So once the date is okay by them, then you book a date for it. Then you need to let them know the actual thing, the actual information you'll be needing from them ahead of time so that they will prepare themselves very well for the uh, requirement. If there is, they need to do some jotting, if they need, they need to come with some documents, you need to let them know the actual um, information you are looking for ahead of time. You need to give them a tip so that they will get prepared. So these are the things you, you do in order to, 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 to conduct this on the part of the, the stakeholders. On the part of yourself as a business analyst, you need to prepare questions you are going to ask during the um, require uh, the interview the, or the workshop date. You really need to prepare some questions. You need to refine your questions. You need to test your questions. Your questions should come in three different sections. Number one section where your question should come should be to understand the nature of the uh, problem. That the, the problem statement. Although during or before the, this interview or at the beginning of the project, you must have received a project brief stating their project, um, um, their, their, their problem state, making their problem statement, understanding the nature of problem they are having and what they are expecting. But you don't just um, uh, work with that alone. You need to confirm, you need to have a one-on-one -on -one with them to confirm that this is what they want. So the first question will come from the area of understanding the problem. Then the second question section will come from understanding how their current process is working or how their current uh, way of doing business. You must understand their current state. You call it current state or the assist. So you must understand the current, you need to ask a question to understand their current way of doing business. And then the third area of the question need to come from understanding the future state. What is the ideal situation they are planning to achieve? That is the current, the future state or to be state. So you need to draft your question within these three sections. And your question should be open-ended, not close-ended. You shouldn't be asking the question that will end up in yes or no, because it's not going to help you explore the, the stakeholder very well. You need to ask a question that will help the, they will make the stakeholder to talk in detail about the particular um, topic. And again, when the stakeholder is um, actually 
um, uh, talking, you shouldn't interrupt stakeholders. You should be a good listener during the interview. So that's how you prepare yourself very well before the interview or before the workshop or before the uh, licitation proper. And then communicates to them ahead of time. If possible, before the a very close, a few days before the, the, the elicitation or the, uh, the data collection or the interview, send a reminder a message to the stakeholder. So that is how to prepare for elicitation or requirement gathering. Then you conduct the interview or you conduct the elicitation. Describe the work performed to understand stakeholders' need and identify a potential solution that may be that may meet those needs. This may involve direct interaction with stakeholders, doing research or running experiments. So during the, uh, um, the day of a station, you conduct the interview. That will help you to gather all the requirements you, you, you need. That is the day you, all the plans, you execute the, the, the plans uh, within the uh, requirements uh, you prepared beforehand asking all the relevant questions within all this um, information, uh, all these questions you've uh, generated before the interview. So that is how you conduct the interview on the day of uh, uh, interview or, or the day of workshop. So after conducting the interview, the next thing is to confirm the result of the interview. You need to confirm the result of the interview because at times you might make a mistake or you find out that what you've recorded, if for instance, if you are jotting, you are writing, find out that what you've recorded is not actually what the stakeholder means. So you, after collecting the, inter, the, the requirement, you need to document it and send it back to the stakeholder to confirm the result of the interview, making sure that this is what the stakeholder actually imputes during the requirement uh, elicitation. So if there is any discrepancies, this is the time for you to make correction and then proceed to a requirement uh, analysis. So that is how uh, you, you, you prepare for licitation, conduct a licitation, then confirm the results. After confirming the result, then communicate business analysis information. When you must have done your requirement um, elicitation and confirm the information, then you, you do your documentation. After doing your documentation, and the analysis, then you communicate the information to the stakeholders for validation. These are the stages. When you communicate the information to stakeholders for validation, then you continue from there to manage the requirement. Because it's not a one-off thing that you collected the requirement is not uh, enough. That's where you, you start your relationship with the stakeholders. Because over time, you find out that stakeholders will, some of them will come and make more input, more especially if you are using agile methodology. So you keep on managing the requirements, refining the requirements, because at times some of the requirements you gather, during working, working with the developers, you find out that they might not understand the requirement or the requirement might become ambiguous. So if you find anything confusing within the requirement, you need to go back 
to the stakeholders to confirm. There is no need of uh, uh, assuming that this is what it is. No, you must, if you don't understand any requirement, you go back to confirm the requirement. And you keep on refining these requirements over time till you finish the project. So that is how you, you, you do your requirements elicitation. It's an ongoing process. You don't just uh, do it one off. You need to engage stakeholders continuously and manage the requirements till you finish the project and then close the project. So let's look at um, <clears throat> how to conduct this interview. So I started to itemize it here so that it will be very easy for you to follow step by step while conducting an um, interview. It's going to be um, to help you to prepare for an interview very well. Uh, pro prepare for interview and conduct the interview and uh, manage the interview very well. The first thing you need to do is to follow uh, points uh, serve as a guide. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to start by clearly defining the purpose of the interview. Just like I mentioned earlier, you need to define the purpose of the interview then identify the target respondent, which are the stakeholders that are need to attend the interview. If you come to an organization, not all, every stakeholder need to attend every interview. Most select those that are uh, mean to be attending the interview. Those that are really have a stake, those, those that are really need to make input. These are the people that you need to, um, identify and uh, invite for the interview. You prepare a list of questions prior to the interview. Decide the type of interview to be uh, you need to use. There are so many types of interview, like you have one-on-one -on -one interview, you have um, um, questionnaire, you have um, survey, you can use all those things to to, to gather requirements. But mostly the one we use is one-on-one -on -one or workshop. Decide the data capturing method. Is it going to be form? Is it going to be questionnaire, notes taking, or video recording? You decide whichever one you need to use before the interview. And you conduct you contact the respondent before the interview. So the stakeholders that are need to be uh, in the interview need to contact them and they let them know about this interview. And you even when the interview is approaching, you can maybe a day before the interview you can uh, send a, a gentle reminder uh, confirming that they are still going to be attending the interview. And we do a pilot interview to refine the question and the interview process. So it's very important that you, you do a pilot session to refine the question that you are going to uh, be using on the interview date. That will help you to have a, a smooth interview because you, you have practiced the interview uh, question beforehand. Then conduct the interview at the schedule, time, and date. Take note or record the interview in order to capture the conversation. That is very, very important because um, um, if uh, in some cases you are very busy, you can employ maybe um, an assistant that can take a note for you or you can record the video. This is very important uh, in an interview, like you find out that you are conducting an interview, maybe via uh, video conferencing, like what we are doing, and you are not recording it. 
is very, very dangerous. You must um, make sure you are recording it because after capturing the inter after the interview session, we find out that you didn't record the interview and you didn't take notes. It's going to be very difficult. You cannot call the stakeholder. Are you going to call the stakeholder again to tell the stakeholder, sorry, you didn't record the interview? How do you think the stakeholder is going to be looking at you as a business analyst? So these are very important things you need to do. The listing during the interview, listen, don't interrupt, make, make the participant feel comfortable and be respectful of their boundary. During the interview, you need to be a good listener. When you ask a question, allow the, the respondent to, to finish before you ask another question. And there is need for you to define boundaries during interview. Don't ask personal questions. Don't ask questions that make your, your respondent uncomfortable like trying to bring their relationship into the interview, which, which is not necessary. Even if you are trying to be um, crack, make a joke or you, you, it doesn't call for. So I think you, you need to be very, very disciplined uh, when it comes to boundaries. Before completing uh, an interview, you must ask the respondent to make sure that they have, um, they are exhausted. You should ask them if they have any other inputs to make or do they have a comment. So you give them the opportunity to make a personal contribution, not just the, the question you, 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 you prepare. Because sometimes you might, um come up with the question and after finish asking the question the respondent might have valuable information to give you which you didn't capture within the questions so this is the time you give them the opportunity to give you other valuable information that will assist you and immediately after the the the, the interview take time document the inf the, the interview um uh you you gathered process it and then send it back to to the uh, stakeholder for confirmation making sure that um what you gathered is the correct uh, uh information the 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 impute during the interview so that's how you conduct uh, a, a perfect interview and then you proceed to analyze your data or your requirements. Any question at this point? Okay. We move to the next thing, which is um strategy analysis. <clears throat> During strategy anal analysis, you analyze the current state, you define the current, the future state, you assess the risk, and then you define change strategy. So, Within this period, you understand the business need and how it relates to where the enterprise function at that particular moment. So that's what um, you do. We've uh, said something about uh, uh, current uh, state. So this is time you do the analysis on, to understand the way um, it happened. You can do that through requirement documentation after analyzing after gathering the inf information you do the requirement documentation and the uh, uh, process mapping that's how you do the analysis then with the information you gathered about the future states you still need to do 
documentation and they do analysis uh, by mapping out the current state uh, using process map at this point. Then you assess the risk, understand the uncertainties around the changes, consider the effects those uncertainties may have on the ability to deliver value through a change and recommend action to address risk where appropriate. So at this point, you need to do a bit of risk analysis. Then you define the change strategy. Perform a gap analysis between current and future states as certain options for achieving the future state and recommend highest value approach for reaching the future state, including transition state that may be required along the way. So these are uh, the preliminary aspects of your requirement analysis. And then after this, you go into your requirement um, analysis proper. This time you, you do your requirement analysis, you, know, you have um, um, done your requirement gathering from the stakeholders, and then you've reached them to confirm that the information, the, 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 they supply the information you gathered and documented is the information they supplied. And then you do your requirement documentation. Then it's time to start your analysis to verify, look at the options, solution options, and the rest of them. And to do that, the first thing is to specify and model requirements, verify requirements, then validate requirements, define requirement architecture, define, uh, de uh, define design options, and analyze potential values and recommend solution. This is what you do at this point. How do you specify model and the requirement? Describe a set of requirements or design in detail using analytical techniques. So this is time you start, um, you need to, the, 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 the information, I mean, the, the problem you are solving will determine the kind of uh, model or the kind of um, techniques you are going to use. But in most cases, you need to do, um, we need to do um, a gap analysis. After mapping out your current state, you need to do a gap analysis to find out the gap. Again, if the, 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 the problem you are solving require, requires root cause analysis, then you need to do a root cause analysis to understand the root cause of the problem. And these uh, processes require requires techniques. I've shown you people how to do um, gap analysis. You analyze the current states, then you map out you, you, you look at your current state where that you map out to decide uh, the area of improvement. And then um, those area of improvement becomes the gap. It's either you are using a process uh, improvement or waste reduction, whichever one you are using, you need to determine the area of improvement, which is now the gap. And then you map out the the future state. That's how you do your gap analysis. Then if you are using, 
if you are trying to find out um, root cause of the problem, then you use a root cause analysis. And to do root cause analysis, we use a fishbone diagram. This, uh, all these techniques I'm mentioning are the techniques we are going to deal with all of them in details. Like gap analysis, we've seen how it was even um, root cause analysis. We are going to deal with root cause analysis in details using a um, fishbone diagram. And what fishbone, fishbone diagram is telling us is about the cause and the effect. So you help us to understand the cause of the problem and the effect of the problem. And understanding the cause of a problem and the effect of the problem, if you'll be able to understand that, you should be able to understand the solution you need to solve. <coughs> To solve the problem. So that's how we do uh, root cause um, analysis. We can equally use another technique called the YY method. So, what that one means that you keep asking why did this happen, drilling down till you find out the actual cause of the uh, problems. But here we are not going to discuss it in detail because we have them. Uh, we are coming to where we are going to discuss the, all the approaches and techniques in details. Then after specifying and uh, the model requirement, the next thing is to verify requirement. Ensure that a set of requirements or design has been developed in enough detail to be usable by a particular stakeholder is internally consistent and of high uh, quality. So the requirement you've um, identified, you make sure that you verify it and make sure that it's going to solve the problem that is meant to, to, to solve and making sure that uh, it's of high value and is uh, consistent. So these are this to, to verify that you need to um, work with the stakeholders as well to make sure that like when we are saying looking at what they impute and uh, is is a part of uh, verifying the requirements. Then the next thing is uh, validate the requirement. Validating requirement is that after every design or every analysis, you need to send it back to the uh, stakeholder for validation to make sure that it's actually going to meet the uh, organizational goals and objectives. So you don't just take um, your own uh, personal initiative. So every action you, you, you take must be validated. So that is uh, how you work as a, as a business analyst in terms of uh, requirements. Every action you take, you, that's why you keep on working with the stakeholders continuously. You need to keep validating every action you take. That's, me, or that's what we mean by requirement validation. You can't take the next step unless the one you are the the, the 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 current deliverable is being validated. So if it's not validated, you cannot um, that particular deliverable cannot be um, closed. It must be validated and approved before you move to the next deliverable. Then you need to define the requirement architecture. Defining requirement architecture is like designing or listing the functional requirements, both functional and non-functional requirements. Prioritizing your your high level requirements. 
That's how you define the architecture. For instance, if let, let's use um, the e-commerce we'll be using, how do we uh, define the requirement architecture here? We need to list all the high level requirements that we need in order to or create this, um, uh, in order to create e-commerce websites. That is, um, and then we, we, we create a detailed, a detailed uh, requirement. So when we list the high level requirements, we list the low level requirements as well and map them out. So that is the requirement architecture. Defining the high level requirements and the low level requirements. Low level requirements means detailed requirements. And uh, map them out in a process um, that can be uh, within the uh, unified modeling language. That is a requirement uh, using the requirement modeling. When we've uh, done the requirement architecture, that is requirement modeling, then we define solution options. We've understand that our e-commerce website, this is the requirement in order to create an e-commerce website. You must have uh, this uh, functionality, you must have shopping cart, you must have a payment gateway, you must have a good front end. We must have all these features, <clears throat> but we don't know the solution we are going to use. What are the solutions we are going to use? That's what we mean by define solution options. And to do that, what do we do? We do uh, brainstorming. We use brainstorming to define our solution options. We look at the market to look at the possible solutions within our budget and within our timeline that we satisfy the requirements we've listed uh, during the requirement uh, architecture. So now our requirement architecture, we'll be looking at our requirement architecture and we'll be looking at the markets, which of these requirements uh, meet the requirement uh, specification. So we have to generate as many requirement as possible. And to do that, we use a brainstorming session to pick all the ideas or the possible solution within the market. So that's what we do. Then, we, after then, we then analyze the solutions, analyze the potential values and recommend solution. How do we do that? We do that by looking at the cost and benefit analysis. What are the costs of all the solution and what are the expected benefits of all the solutions that we've, um, we generated during our um, brainstorming session. To do that, we have um, so many um, consulting websites or firms we can use that will help us to do um, such analysis like uh, Gartner analysis. We use Gartner to do some of these um, analysis. Gartner is a consulting firm 
they are the highest rated company so far in terms of uh, solution evaluation. They evaluate all the solution in the market, all the industries. They do rating based on different um, key performance indicate indicators. So that's how they do the analysis. So to do our, our, our recommendation, we can use Gartner analysis to do some of this. Uh, um, Gartner analysis, the, the information we generate from Gartner analysis is going to help us to do um, analyze potential values of every solution and then make recommendation. So this is uh, how we do our requirement analysis. But the thorough aspect of it, we are going to come to look at it thoroughly. Let me see. So. So that is um, how we are going to how we do our requirement analysis. Then after requirement analysis, then we do solution evaluation. Solution evaluation here we measure solution performance. We analyze solution performance. We assess solution limitation and uh, assess enterprise limitation and recommend action to increase a uh, solution value. So solution evaluation, just like um, we did in the requirement analysis, is the time we, we start um, evaluating all the solutions, all the solutions within uh, uh, the generated, uh, like we need to generate at least three or four solutions for the organization to choose one. So all the solutions we've, um, generated and analyzed, we need to evaluate all of them, looking at their performances, looking at their uh, limitation, looking at risk associated with each, each solution. That's what uh, we, we mean by solution evaluation. And after solution evaluation, that's when we do the final recommendation. And after solution evaluation, that's when we prepare our business case. That's why we prepare business case for validation. We determine most appropriate way to assess the performance of a solution including how it aligned with enterprise goals and objectives and perform the assessment. That's how we measure solution performance. We need to measure solution performance. And we analyze a performance measure, examine information regarding the performance of the solution in order to understand the value it delivers to the enterprise or to the stakeholder and determine whether it's meeting current business uh, need. Then assess solution limitations, investigate issues within the scope of a solution that may prevent it from meeting the specified 
a business need. And then assess enterprise limitation. We investigate issues outside the scope of the solution that may be preventing the enterprise from realizing the full value that a solution is capable of um, providing. Then we recommend action to increase value. Identify and define action the enterprise can take to increase the value that can be delivered by a solution. And to do all this analysis, Gartner analysis or Gartner reports will help us to do this work very well. Let me show us this Gartner so that we'll see how this Gartner works because it's very, very powerful. Because you'll be wondering how do I do all this analysis? Actually, Gartner will help us to do a very good uh, job. Let me just uh, bring Gartner here so we can see how Gartner works. So this is um, Gartner website. And uh, let's see, we are looking at um, e-commerce solution. We want an e-commerce solution. So Gartner will help us to provide, Gartner will bring all the um best and highest rated e-commerce solution within the the market for us to choose from and then give us the analysis so looking at here you see products in digital commerce markets and from here you can see we have shopify we have um Margato Commerce, we have uh, Big Commerce, we have uh, VTES Commerce, we have SAP Cloud Commerce, and so many of them, so many of them, both Oracle, Salesforce, all of all the commerce they here. Now, how do we choose from all these um, e-commerce solutions? Now, are you choosing from the rating? This is the rating. Um, from the rating, Shopify is rated above all the other e-commerce solutions. So Shopify is rated 4.4, and uh, Magento is rated 4.3, and uh, Big Commerce is rated 4.4, and uh, VTES Commerce Platform is rated 4.4 and SAP Cloud Commerce is rated uh, 3.8. So now let's say we are going to choose Shopify because Shopify is rated more than others. Let's choose Shopify and then let's look at Shopify. So look at Shopify. According to rating, customer experience, here is the rating. Under evaluation and contracting, Shopify is rated 4.5 under customer experience. Integration and the, the um, deployment, 4.5. Service and support, 4.5. 
this is how. So if you are going to choose Shopify as a solution, these are the analysis you need to give while you are choosing Shopify. But let's have a more, a closer look. So let's look at review. This is the way what people are saying about um, Shopify. Now let's compare Shopify one on one with other e commerce solutions so that we'll have a reason for choosing Shopify over big commerce. Now looking both of them, look at the rating and uh, let's look at the breakdown, rating breakdown. This is the rating breakdown. And then let's look at the rating under other subcategories. For instance, under evaluation and contracting, uh, big commerce is scoring 4.4, while Shopify is scoring 4.5. Under service and the support, big commerce is scoring 4.5, Shopify is scoring 4.4. This is under lies. Then let's add more vendors for comparison. Now we'll add more vendor. Which vendor are we going to add? Let's say we are going to add Salesforce and we we'll compare. So now we're comparing three e commerce solutions. And looking at the breakdowns, looking at uh, three of them under evaluation of, on contracting, you can see they are rating Shopify is rated 4.5, sales commerce 4.4, and the big commerce 4.4. So this is how we do our solution evaluation what we are doing is solution evaluation we're evaluating these three solutions to look at their limitation their performances and the rest of them so if you need if you are doing analysis as a as a business analyst you're analyzing solution this is how you come and they do analysis this is a, a, a high level professional analysis as a business analysis under uh, solution evaluation so this is what you do. So let's go back to our, our slide. So with all these things are something we we'll need to come back later to, to look at it very well. When we'll be doing a um, uh, stick, um, when we'll be doing our business analysis techniques. Then after solution evaluation, like you see, we've done a bit of um, a sample of uh, solution evaluation using Gartner analysis. We've seen how it works. We we'll looked at uh, some of the limitation performances and the rest of them <clears throat> now we have chosen then we've written our after that we decide that we <clears throat> we document our our work using a um, <clears throat> business case and after writing the business case once the business case is um approved then we'll start um uh designing our requirements that will bring us to requirement uh, design so how do we design our requirements so once the customers want 
and need have been identified, the team convert them to engineering requirements for the product. Design requirements are the functional attributes that enable the team to convert ideas into design features. At this point, the BA, that is the business analyst, convert the business requirements to technical requirements which are user stories and their acceptance criteria. Then what is the user stories and what is acceptance criteria? The user story is a requirement for any functionality or feature which is written down in one or two line or maximum of five line. That is um, user story. We are coming down with details for all this, but at this point, we will need to just understand um, the user story. We are going to treat them. This is going to be some of our, our assignments. We need to know how to write a user story. We need to know how to write um, acceptance criteria. We need to know how to create a user story map. These are some of the things we are going to be doing. So acceptance criteria is a set of acceptance condition or business rule, which the functionality or feature should satisfy and meet in order to be accepted by the product owner or the stakeholder. So that is a user story and that's the acceptance criteria. So your requirement design is when we start designing our, our solution. We design our solution. And after designing our solution, we we'll then start implementing our solutions, implementing our projects. That's why we started building our products. So that is um, how we manage requirements. So all we'll be doing is our requirement uh, management. So these uh, can call it uh, a requirement management life cycle. So now we've done this, the, what, the next thing we're going to be doing is um, business analysis techniques. This is where we, we have to be, things are going to be getting more technical because these are the techniques we are actually going to be using to be doing all this uh, uh, work, either requirement um, uh, gathering, requirement analysis, uh, solution evaluation. These are the techniques we are going to be using to um, carry out all these processes. And uh, we're going to be discussing them in details, because these are the documents we are going to be using very well as a business analyst. These are going to be our delivery, where our delivery will be coming from. So under these techniques, you see the way is a categorized under stages. At each stage, you see the techniques you are going to use. So now under this um, initiate stage, what we need to do under initiate stage is um, we need to do stakeholder management. That's the first thing we need to do. We need to identify our stakeholders and we need to manage them. So, and to 
identify stakeholders and manage them, we are going to be using RACI, RACI metrics. That's what we are going to be doing, uh, using to do that. RACI means uh, responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. So we are going to be using a methodology, a, a technique called RACI metrics to do that, to identify our stakeholders and uh, manage them. We are equally going to be using stakeholder analysis document. This document will help us to analyze our stakeholders very well. We are going to start seeing this document one by one and analyze them in details. And we're going to use personal analysis. This is going to help us equally to understand our stakeholders and analyze them very well. This is three main powerful documents uh, we are going to use to analyze our stakeholders. Once you understand how to use three these three documents to analyze stakeholders, you are very perfect. During interview, you must be, they must ask you, how do you manage your stakeholders? If you can tell them how you can use race metrics, stakeholder analysis, and the uh, person, even as a senior business analyst, you are going to get the job. So this is it. Then the next one is a um, requirement elicitation, which is a requirement uh, analysis. Then what are the techniques? These are the techniques. Interview, observation, workshop, survey, and questionnaire. We are going to look at those, these documents and how to use them um, to conduct uh, requirement elicitation. Then we have um, requirement analysis. What are the techniques we are going to use to do this requirement analysis? We are going to use process analysis. We are going to be using process modeling. We are going to be using data modeling. We are going to be using root cause analysis. We are going to be using gap analysis. We are going to be using prioritization through Moscow analysis. And we are going to be using business case. These are the documents we are going to be using to conduct our requirement analysis. So these are the key. If you can understand these documents, there is no interview you will attend that will not crush as a business analyst. Then we are going to look at uh, solution evaluation. What are the techniques? The techniques we are going to use, be using is a brainstorming. We're going to be using vendor assessment and we're going to be using SWOT analysis. All these documents, we're going to be treating them one after the other to understand them. So your requirement, your, your assignment is going to be coming from all these techniques. This is what you need to be doing within your requirement. You will be handling one or, or two or so many of these um, techniques. That's how I do my, I give my assignments. You must know how to do all these things very well as a business analyst. It's going to be very, very practical oriented. Then we look at, um, Define stage. Define stage is when you design solution. Then how do we do that? What are the techniques? We have a requirement design. Under requirement design, you need to write your user stories. User stories. I've said that before. And you need to know how to write your acceptance criteria. Pay every user story there is an, an, an acceptance criteria. Every user story you write, you must write an acceptance criteria. And then we need to write um, use cases. You need to have, know how to design your use cases. 
and then wireframe and mock-up. So these are the things. And the other thing that is missing here is, um, we have something missing here, which is uh, I didn't put test cases. Test cases, because you need to test every, every, every user story, every user story will have acceptance criteria and you have a test case. You need to test every, a user story. That is every user stories is a functionality, a piece of functionality. So let me show us what user story is in a real, in a real world, how user story is. So we we'll understand this user story I'm talking is a, is a functionality. Okay, this is an e-commerce website. And uh, I want to show you some of the user stories we have here. So this is a product. This product page is a user story. So you have ability to show the product details, information about the product, the user story. Then add this uh, product to cart, ability to add this product to cart. It's a, it's a user story. It's a user story. And then proceed to checkout. Is a user story. So these are functionalities. So this uh, shopping cart here, you can see. Is a user story. So when you remove this from shopping cart, it's still a user story. So User story is a functionality, behaviors, functionalities of uh, features of a, a particular software. So to register here, we need um, this page. This page is a user story. This is a feature, functionality. So to log in, ability to log in, this is still a user story. So these are what I'm talking about, user story. So now if we ability to log in using a social media account, it's still a user story. So, and in order to browse this website using categories, that is navigation. You see, these are function, these are user stories. So ability to, 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 to do something, these are user stories. So the user, that's how this, I just want to use illustration to explain user story. What well, is very, very important to understand user stories and acceptance criteria because all you be um, going to be dealing with as a business analyst is solution. And solution we are talking about, we are talking about softwares. And the softwares is all about user stories and acceptance criteria. So that's how software development. 
So this is it. So that is um, under the fine um, stage. Then when we come under execute stage, what are the techniques we need to use? We are going to use Scrum event management. And under Scrum event management, we are going to be using um, sprint planning, daily stand-up, sprint demo, and uh, sprint retrospective. So, and that is it. And under closure, we'll write our closure report. We'll do our, um, we'll do our we'll document, our lesson learn reports, and the post implementation review. These are the techniques uh, we need in order to um, handle this, to, to, to do our, our job very well as a business analyst. So we are going to be discussing all these techniques um, that is listed down here. But that, we are going to be doing that in our next class, but well, that is it here, like um, stakeholder management tools. Like I say, we have it here, RAC, power grid. These are things we are going to be discussing. Like this is how, this is how RAC looks like. This is RAC metrics. This is stakeholder management metrics. This is a um, state, uh, stakeholder analysis document. This is personal analysis and so many of them, but we are not going to um, treat them today. So we are going to end our lecture today at this um, Uh, business analyst te techniques. So uh, subsequently, we are going to be treating all these techniques in details, starting with um, stakeholder management and uh, using a race metrics and the stakeholder analysis document. That's what we are going to be discussing later. So, and that's where uh, your assignment will start coming up from all these uh, documents, you need to start, or want you to start producing some of these documents. That's what we are going to be doing. Any question? Are we sleeping? No, sir. We are here, sir. Yeah, Donald, how are you? You join, you join later. You and uh, Lasha, they join later. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. I joined um, a bit late. Yeah. I had um, a lot of assignments and I came in a bit late too. Okay. Well, um, we are, we are progressing and we are getting at the stage that is going to be very, very technical. The time so these are the technical aspects. And that is, so that's what we will we'll be doing subsequently. Well, if at this point, I think uh, we don't have any question. So, uh, if we don't have any question, then we need to. Uh, we're going to.
Are you are you talking to me or are you? I don't know if you are talking to your baby or you're talking to me. Okay. Um thank you all for partic participating in today's class. We are going to continue tomorrow um the same time, but I will send the the link for tomorrow's class. And um please if I've started the class already, I wouldn't want to see to come and start asking questions that is not related to the class that you are having immediately or topics. So if you're having challenges when I've started class, then you have to wait. Either you watch it, uh, the video, because I wouldn't want a distraction when I'm already teaching. So I wish you a good night's rest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, sir.